I'm very uh, honored and uh, happy to uh, be, uh, be in, invited to, to speak in this uh, meeting. Yeah. And of course, even more uh, happy and honored to have worked and to work with um, Menachem. Uh, so we share um, some interests, uh, for example, the interest in music and culture. Uh, and uh, when we meet, we usually, in some place, we usually check the cultural program. And uh, then if there's some time left, we do some um, talk math. Uh, here we are in New York. And uh, one thing we share is written here, we love infinity. Um, OK. Um, and uh, in mathematics, we, for example, we uh, uh, share an, an, an interest in extended uh, logics, where Menachem made some important contributions. Um, um, <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so the topic of this talk is um, a modification uh, of constructible hierarchy uh, by using, instead of first order logic, some uh, extended logic, some extension of first order logic, typically logic with uh, um, some new, new operations. Uh, and so a typical subset of this. Uh, um, a typical set in this hierarchy, which I denote L prime alpha, just to distinguish it from L alpha, is then a definable set of this type with parameters in L prime alpha, but this defining formula need not be first order. Uh, OK, so this may seem like a kind of frivolous, um, uh, idea, but, but anyway, <laughs> the idea was to, to look how connected, the constructible hierarchy is how intimately it is connected with, with just being a first order, using first order logic. So here are the, uh, the, here is a rough map of different logic. So first order logic is something he, like here. Then there are these infinitary languages and generalized quantifiers. And that's pretty much all there is, except of course higher order logics, which are the, the oldest of uh, of them all, and if I if I look a little bit more carefully, the map um, um, it looks like like this. Um, so here is the first order logic, and uh, here are some generalized quantifiers. I will talk about them, so you will see what they uh, what they are, and they are typically countably compact. Uh, and here are infinitary logics. They are typically absolute in some sense and have the kind of levenhans column theorem. So by Lindstrom's theorem, there's only one logic in the intersection, the first order logic. And then hovering above are the second order uh, logics. And then there, there are some, some um, which don't fit this picture exact, exactly. But what I'm going to do in this talk, I go, or what we did where, was we, we, did, we went from first order logic different routes, different paths up, uh, up this hierarchy. And because here, although I'm not going to talk about it, is, is true set theory. So of course, not something is going to happen and unless V equals L. So it's not going to, to, be, to be all the time uh, just repeating L. Um, an aspect, so here is a picture of this uh, situation that we have logics, uh, whatever they are worth, or kinds of logics, we have inner models, whatever they are worth, and we associate to a logic an inner model, which is like an invariant. Like there are different invariants of logics which have been usually studied, like Hanf number, Levenham number, decision problem, delta extension, um, interpolation kind of invariants. Uh, these are typically like somehow moral theoretic invariants, but this is a, a, a invariant, which is an inner model. And it may be interesting that for some completely different logics, which seem in model theory totally different, 
the invariant is the same. So this invariant doesn't distinguish them. But even perhaps more interesting in some logics which in moral theory seem extremely close to each other, like you wouldn't even make a distinction perhaps, but in the inner model the, the invariant separates them completely. So th that means that they are actually uh, very different. So this is how, how this can be looked upon either as a construction of inner models, and maybe interesting inner models, and I will argue that this might be the, <coughs> might be the case, although it's up to kind of opinion. But also it can be looked upon as a study of logics using this invariant uh, and to understand better logics. And as I said, I, I have a background in the study of these logics going back to... Um, Uh, what is the invariant? When you say the invariant. Ah, uh, uh, I went too fast here. Yes. Um, yes, I forgot to mention that here is the inner model C of L star. It's the union of this hierarchy. Yeah, so L is constructed by a hierarchy like this and you get L. Okay, so here is a different hierarchy, L prime, and it generates a class. And this is class is called C L star. So that's the inner model, that's the invariant. <coughs> so here are some examples, uh, uh, sort of invariant, immediate examples. Of course, L is just the first order. The L omega 1 omega, when it is, yeah, L omega 1 omega just gives L of R because the L omega 1 omega formulas code reals. The syntax is not finite. Right? Yes. Finitely many variables. Where you allow, it depends how many parameters you allow. Yeah. Yes, you, you, of course, an L omega 1 omega formula may have infinitely many variables, but here we restrict to only finitely many variables, free variables. If we allow infinitely many, then we get the Chang model. And the original definition of Chang model by Chang uh, is that he used L omega 1 omega 1. Uh, and by a result of my Hill and Scott, if we use second order logic, then we get uh, we get hot. So um, in this picture, uh, if we go to the infinitary uh, direction here, already we get L of R, and here we get uh, the Chang model, and and here we, we have hot. So uh, it's it's clear that something happens if we if if we know that B, B is not L, and if we know axiom of choice is true, and if we know that hot is not. Uh, v and so forth, we, uh, there's something is going to happen here on the way. And um, now uh, I will not go further into this, um, uh, this infinitary logics uh, because, except I say something about the absolute logics. Uh, so absolute logics are logics which, uh, where the truth and syntax are absolute in the sense of delta one being delta one. Uh, <coughs> in set theory, and <coughs> I think uh, there is a um, um, okay. So some 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 uh, words about inner model properties. Um, uh, Uh, okay, so the properties of inner models that we look, because we get, we get new inner models, so properties that we are interested to sort of check and try to verify are such as forcing absolute theories, forcing absolute, uh, or that we have large cardinals in the inner models, or that the inner model satisfies axiom of choice, or that there is some in the, the inner model is some sense a priori uh, or natural. And uh, of course, 
we, we want inner models to decide questions which CFC doesn't um, uh, decide. And if we look at the existing inner models, L is forcing absolute, but not too many, too many large cardinals. Hard has large cardinals, but is not forcing absolute. L of R is forcing absolute, has large cardinals, but no axiom of choice, if we assume large cardinals. And then ext extender models are, are uh, of course, uh, the most common inner model, but are, uh, well, I'm, they are, in a, they are sort of tailor-made for certain large cardinals. So about the, the <coughs> um, absolute logics first, just to, to uh, throw off kind of lose, lose, lose fat uh, from this uh, situation. Uh, logics which are absolute in the sense that the truth and syntax are absolute, uh, and it is enough to be absolute with respect to this, this very strong theory CFC plus V equals L. Uh, uh, I mean, this absolute is, of course, the weaker, the stronger the theory. Uh, then we get nothing new. The, um, the modified constructible hierarchy is just the old, old hierarchy. Uh, and because we can allow parameters, for example, all these Q alpha, where Q alpha says that there exist at least alpha alpha many elements satisfying a formula, all these give nothing, nothing new. Uh, CFC plus V equals L. Oh, I see. So this is the theory under which this entire is supposed to be Yes. Because absoluteness means delta 1, and delta 1 means that you have a defining formula in sigma 1 and pi 1 form, and you can prove the equivalence of this delta sigma 1 and pi 1 in a theory which can be as weak or as strong theory as CFC plus V equals L, which means the assumption uh, respectively rather weak assumption, except that, of course, the interesting things in that theory are not absolute what even. The, the, the set theoretic property of X being a formula of that logic, which in L omega 1 omega, everything is absolute, but to be a, to be a formula of L omega 1 omega, you have to have all kinds of countability restrictions, so it is not an absolute um, property. Um, Menachem uh, defined this very interesting quantifier a uh, long time ago called Magidor Malitz quantifier, which um, quantifies in a formula an n, n tuple and says that there is a, not only there are uncountably many elements satisfying this, but there is an uncountable set uh, or a set of size alpha, such that every tuple from there satisfies this. Uh, so this is kind of homogeneity property. <laughs> there is a homogeneous set, um, but, but even more because it has to satisfy phi. Uh, this is an interesting uh, logic, but as this map shows, uh, I don't count it as countable compact because the countable compactness depends on diamond. So with diamond, it is countably a, a compact axiomatizable, but um, uh, without diamond, it can be very, very uh, non-compact. It, it is almost close to secondary logic if you build your model of set theory using Aronstein, uh, using Sussnin trees, and so that the Sussnin trees, whether you kill them in a certain way, so that you have a kind of definable sequence of Sussnin trees, and then in L, and then you kill certain amounts, one, some of them, and leave some others. So then, from what is what has been killed, you can read off like the second order theory uh, of natural numbers and such things. So it can be very uh, strong, but Anyway, here, uh, uh, this is the result. Um, first of all, one can, using these Sussnin tree forcing constructions, arrange that the constructible hierarchy based on Makir or Malitz quantifier is not L, but surprisingly, very surprisingly, 
if zero sharp exists, then this gives just L. It's, it, 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 it was a surprise, surprising uh, uh, result. And so now we move on in this, in this map. Um, uh, I, I took care of this uh, and, and this, and now I will con concentrate on these two, cofinality quantifier and the stationary uh, logic. And here something new will come up um, and something uh, interesting comes up. So let's first look at the cofinality quantifier. This uh, was defined by Saharon. Um, it says that in a, form, a, a formula phi defines a binary um, predicate which is a linear order of cofinality omega. This, is, this was the first fully compact uh, logic. E extension of first logic. Fully compact means f compact whatever size the vocabulary is. E e not, not only in countable language, but in any language. And it has other nice properties. It has the downward learners, co downward learners column theorem down to omega one. is a very e simple e e proof. So, and the axiomatization is not just an axiomatization, it's a very intuitive based on our intuition about cofinality. Uh, so it is, uh, really codifies our uh, thinking of, of, of cofinality. And uh, we denote, because there are a lot of uh, results about this constructible hierarchy using cofinality quantifiers, so I denote it by C star. And here is an interesting, perhaps the most interesting, uh, set which is in this C star. Take any beta, then the ordinals below the beta, which have cofinality greater than omega in V, is in C star. So the C star is this inner model uh, which knows that there is this huge V around it. And the inner model doesn't know what, the, what V is like, but, but when, whenever the, the inner model takes an ordinal, it can ask a question, is this omega cofinal when you look at it from the wonderful outside world or not? And then there is the answer, like an oracle answers yes or no. Um, so the C star has this kind of oracle information from outside, but limited only as to the cofinality omega. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so uh, here is a first observation. If zero sharp exists, then, then it belongs to C star. Um, there are much stronger results of this type, but let's just look at this first, uh, because that certainly distinguishes it from, from L. And we can, the point is that we can define zero sharp uh, in C star by taking, taking mm, mm, this, um, this kind of definition and by, by looking at ordinals below alpha uh, omega of V, which are regular in L and cofinality is greater than omega. So this oracle information from outside can be used to, to code. What's that? Which L, L, there's only one L. It's a usual L. I don't use that notation for anything else. Uh, and one can enhance this so to show that, um, um, that if, if X is, uh, um, that x, x sharp is in C star. Here, here is this, this too much. For any x such that x, x sharp exists. So C star is really closed under, under sharp if, if the sharp exists. Um, and as I said that there are 
stronger results than just the sharp. Uh, the Dodians and um, Cormorol is contained in C sharp. And if L of mu exists, then, then L of mu, some L of mu is contained in C sharp. Philip Welsh has in, uh, extended this, these results to other core models uh, and, and also other inner models for large cardinals. But not, it's not very, uh, well, I, I will talk about the, the, the limits uh, in a moment. How, how far you can go. So um, now he, he, here is a very simple uh, observation, so I can actually give the proof uh, in a few, few minutes, that if V equals C star, uh, which is certainly possible because V may, v may, be, a, 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 v, v may be equal to L. Uh, so, um, there, then there cannot be any measurable cardinals. So suppose V equals C star, and there is a measurable cardinal. <coughs> and we take the uh, embedding. So then into an inner model, then the inner model is closed under uh, kappa sequences. So therefore, the C star, which is defined by reference to uh, countable sequences in M is the same as C star in V, which because we assume V equals C star is V, so we have a non-trivial embedding of V into V. So this shows that if we assume V equals C star, then there cannot be a measurable cardinal. We don't know whether there can be a measurable cardinal in C star when V is not equal to C star. But we know that if there are infinitely many measurable cardinals in V, then in no, no infinite set of measurable cardinals can be in, in C star. And this is like a proof of Kuhnen that if there are uncountably many measurable cardinals, then axiom of choice is false in the Chang model. Of course, a Chang model contains C star. Chang model doesn't have axiom of choice, but C star has axiom of choice. I didn't emphasize it, but C star does have axiom of choice. So it's, it's not the Chang model in this case. And uh, one may look at the proof of Kuhnen's of proof of the failure of axiom of choice. Why does it, why axiom of choice fails in Chang model, uh, but is true in, in C star? And, and, and that uh, leads to the um, conclusion that no infinite set of measurable cardinals of V can be in C star. It can be different. It can be. Yeah, it does, it's not absolute in that sense. Yes, in this sense it is like hot. And it is sort of maybe disappointing uh, that C star does not have that absoluteness. But, but uh, to compensate that disappointment, perhaps there are some less disappointing things, which I will talk about. But let's first um, I remind you of stationary tower forcing. Here first is the kind of the usual, the wooden tower uh, from a wooden cardinal, uh, the countable stationary tower. But here is the Foreman Makidor uh, tower that Matt talked about um, uh, and expressed um, some feelings about that. But um, so what's nice about this tower here, which is different, is that if you have regular cardinals kappa less than lambda, then there is a cofinality omega preserving forcing such that in the generic extension, there is an embedding which maps kappa to lambda. Okay, so now this, this uh, forcing comes, this tower becomes very useful for us. So let's first uh, observe a kind of simple fact that 
if there is a Wooden cardinal, then the omega 1 of V is strongly Mahler in C star. And we take the usual uh, countable stationary tower and map omega 1 to the Wooden cardinal. Now, there is an argument which shows that when you look at C star, not in V, but in M, in the inner model C star, you can actually see that in V. It is, it is the C star less than lambda in V. L C star less than lambda means that you, you change cofinality omega in the definition to cofinality less than lambda. So the quantifier says that phi is a linear order of cofinality less than lambda. Just as this is like C star less than omega 1. So in fact, this is, although this is made in the generic extension, it is actually, we can see that in V. And now we can do the usual argument which shows that in such a, when you have such an embedding, then omega 1 <laughs> is mahlom and strongly inaccessible. And uh, even the cardinals above Aleph 1 V uh, in, and if there's a wooden cardinal above, they are weakly compact. And here we use them, uh, the um, foreman Magidor stationary tower. Uh, and uh, because the forcing preserves cofinality omega in this inner model, and therefore, um, I mean, in this generic extension, C star is actually the original C star. And one can pull off the usual um, weak compactness argument in this kind of embedding situation to show that these cardinals are weakly compact. Um, in fact, we can do more. Uh, if we have a proper class of winning in cardinals, which we, we assume from this on a lot, uh, then the regular cardinals above Aleph 1 are indiscernible in C star. I don't, I won't give the argument, but it uses very strongly the Foreman Makidor, uh, which, first thing, which um, allows us to move regular cardinals with embeddings to wooden cardinals and wooden cardinals to each other. And by moving these cardinals with these embeddings back and forth, we can uh, then prove this indiscernibility. Um, okay, uh, let's look at one explicit computation of C star. If we assume, of course, well, if V equals L, then C star is L. But if V equals L or mu, th then we can actually compute C star. And it is the, what you get when you iterate from this measure, when you iterate the, the, uh, the ultra power omega square times, and then you take the limit points kappa omega times n, uh, and you, you add this kind of prickly sequence to this, to this inner model, then this is exactly C star. It has um, it has all the, all the information because C star is defined really by using kind of an oracle, as I said, what happens in V. We know what, what the relationship between V, because V is L of mu, and this is, because it's, it all comes from ultra powers, and ultra powers, little bit iterated ultra powers, and we know what happens to cofinality is pretty much there, and what comes becomes omega cofinal and what, what remains non-omega co-final. So, but we have to have this information because um, there. And by contemplating on this information, uh, one can show that this is exactly. And I think Philip has uh, extended this to other um, inner models for higher Mitchell order. Uh, and, and then this, this set, sets are just more, more complicated. But in this kind of concrete models, one can compute what C star is um, explicitly. OK, so now the, perhaps the most uh, interesting property of C star 
uh, is that it's forcing absolute. Its theory is forcing absolute. We assume a proper class of Wooden cardinals. If we have a forcing, set forcing notion and, and a generic, then the theory of a C star is the same as the theory of the C star in the forcing extension. And so it is in this sense forcing uh, robust. Um, Mr. Chairman, how much time I have left? Oh, you have, uh, let's see, you have 14 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, really? We started at, we started at five, uh, at five to 10. So, we'll go in at uh, 10 to 40. What's the good of you? <laughs> okay, quiet please. Thanks. Uh, okay, so this is kind of familiar looking, uh, looking uh, uh, situation that we look at an Im the embedding from, a, from the wooden tower here. But mm, the point is that, of course, here is an elementary embedding, but we can compute what this is in M1. It is just the C star less than lambda in V. Then after the forcing, we, we do the wooden tower. We have elementary equivalence here. And when we look at this, because the forcing is smaller than lambda, this is actually the same as C star less than lambda in V. And these are the same things. So this, without forcing and after forcing, they must be elementary equivalent, because the embeddings are elementary. So therefore, for example, there is a strong feeling that continuum hypothesis it should have a truth value in this, in this C star because it's rigid under forcing. Um, I won't go through the uh, proof, uh, it's a standard moral theory, but the number of reals in C star we know is at most Aleph 2. Uh, so, this is, a, as I said, a standard sort of elementary chain of length Aleph 1, uh, in, which is uh, done in proofs of completeness of the cofinality quantifier and so forth. Uh, and it, it shows that every real comes, which comes to this C star comes on a level the size of which is Aleph 1. Okay. Now, what's that? Aleph 2 of V. So uh, why this is not very interesting is that we all the time look at C star um, mainly under the hypothesis that, that there are many if wooden cardinals. And then there are only countably many, um, many reals because Aleph 1 is strongly inaccessible in C star. So this is kind of moot, this uh, result, if we have large cardinals. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, it's, um, um, it's, it's the first kind of observation about the, the power set. Um, I think it's worthwhile. Well, yes. Actually, it's consistent. Yeah, it, it's coming up. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So, um, um, as I said, we assume usually these wooden kernels in order to have something to work on. So, in, infinitely many wooden kernels, uh, and then there is a cone of reals. So that C star, when we uh, when we throw in a real x, we allow the x as as, as a parameter there that satisfies C H. So, in this, this, this means that, in a sense, um, I mean, in some sense, if we take a random real, then, then with probability one, C star satisfies C H, but it's not quite, quite that. But um, it gives credibility. Uh, if the proof is uh, that we look at this set of reals so that the relativized C star satisfies C H. We saw that it's projective. And um, 
uh, then we use the result of Martin that if a set of rails is closed on a Turing reducibility, then if it is projective, then uh, it's, it, there's a cone in, in the set or in the complement. And then we saw that in the complement there cannot be a cone because for every real there's a, another real which is in this set and which we get by collapsing continuum 12 uh, one essentially. And then using forcing to, to, to code like Martin's axiom style, it, the set of size alpha one to a real. Um, So here are the consistency results that Menachem mentioned. Um, that first of all, if, if we now if we throw out large cardinals, we start with V equals L, uh, then we can, with the so-called modified number forcing, we can make continuum to be a, a kappa and preserve cardinals. And even perhaps more importantly, we can make uh, get a model starting from V equals L, uh, and in, inaccessible where V equals C star and continuum is RF2. So that's uh, a. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now. Um, Um, I, I went here, and now I, I, I take one step further. So since here we had C star. Now we take one step further. We have a stronger logic. We are still way beyond, beyond below Hod and second order logic, I suppose. Uh, and this was just L. So here is, here is where we are on this, on this trail. Stationary logic, a very in interesting and important logic. It was introduced, uh, um, it seems independently by Mackay, Kaufman, Barweis, and Sela. And I will talk about Sela's stationary logic in a, in a minute. So it is a second order quantifier. Almost all S sets S, countable sets S satisfy phi. So phi is a formula with a second order predicate S, capital S, and this says that almost all sets, in the sense of the club filter of countable subsets, satisfies phi. So the set of countable sets which satisfy phi contains a club of countable sets. And I denote the, the resulting constructible hierarchy by CAA. And of course, C star is, is part of CAA. Now, uh, the, uh, is it so that I have like a few minutes? Of? Yeah, six minutes. OK, thanks. Um, the most important property of the CAA from which everything else seems to follow is this club, club determinedness. Uh, so well, we can say any first order structure that it is club determined if for any formula phi, and now we, we allow this a, a quantifier, either phi contains a club or not phi contains a club. So the, it means that when you play a kind of a club game, uh, two players contribute alternatively a countable set, then one of the players, the player who wants it to satisfy phi has a winning strategy, or the player who wants it to fail to satisfy phi has a winning strategy. And we say that CAA is club determined if every level is, is club determined. This is a concept which came, arose in the work of Alan Meckler and, and, and Saharon in model theory. But here it is very useful because of the, uh, uh, of the following fact. If we assume a proper class of, of measurable wooden cardinals or MM++, uh, either of them, then CAA indeed is club determined. Uh, and in fact, um, mm, 
uh, okay, so I won't go into the, um, into the proof, but the proof for the wooden kernels and for MM++ are slightly different. In the wooden kernels, of course, we use the uh, uh, stationary tower and an ultrafilter <coughs> on the wooden kernel. Uh, in MM++, we use the fact that uh, uh, the non-stationary ideal is, is saturated and, and we get an embedding from there. The proofs are somewhat different and rather long proofs. So uh, from this it follows almost immediately that under these assumptions every regular cardinal is measurable in CAA. Because, because of this dichotomy, this, because of this determinants. The club filter, in the, if the club filter is, is read, restricted to the cofinality omega ordinals, it's an ultrafilter. So all these cardinals are measurable and uh, uh, unlike the, what we don't know about the C star. Also the theory of CAA is set forcing absolute. Now we assume that there is a proper class of measurable wooden cardinals and we use the, the club determinants and we can prove that the CAA is also forcing absolute. So it is like C star, it's forcing absolute. It has all these measurable cardinals. Um, and now the question arose, um, of course, um, of course we were sort of uh, uh, able to show that uh, CH is true on a cone, but we wanted to prove CH in this model. It, it turns out that there is an argument, I, I say modestly here, we claim, but I, because we, are, we have not written it down, but um, uh, we have to add a little thing into AA. Something which does this is, 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 is enough. Um, um, uh, technically, it, we allow implicit definitions rather than just explicit definitions. And the results about CAA still hold for this slight extension. And in this slight extension, with the proper class of measurable wooden kernels, we have an argument which shows that, um, or we claim that we have, that CH is true. Um, uh, <coughs> now, the stationary logic that Shella actually defined is this. Maybe I won't go very much into it. I just tell you what the fact is. It's a slightly, di slightly different stationary logic, but Mackay, eh, Kaufman, and, and Barwise clearly thought that it is the equivalent to their stationary logic. Eh, but it, it turns out that this slight modification, um, which is the, sort of the original stationary logic, is different. Um, in this sense, uh, if there are large cardinals, that the inner model from the, the Shella stationary logic is actually L of mu, just one measurable cardinal. Uh, so, as I said in the beginning, that we want to also use these inner models to see some differences between logics. So, he, these logics were separated. One leads to an inner model with a proper class of measurable cardinals, the other one into this with just one measurable cardinal. And, but this is also uh, uh, <clears throat> um, also forcing absolute. Okay, so I went this 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 trade here, and here we have C star. Here we have the AA model, and they both have forcing absolute theory, and we have some information about CH in in both cases, and they have. Uh, large cardinals. So let's see what, uh, and if we go all the way here, we have hot. Uh, so here is, uh, are the open questions at the moment. Um, and this is my last uh, slide. So C star does have large cardinals, but only up at the moment, up, only at, up to um, sort of weekly compact that we know. We don't know whether C star can have a measurable cardinal, but of course it has inner models with measurable cardinals. As C star has some elements of GCH uh, in some different forms, 
we don't know whether it satisfies C8 when we assume large cardinals. And the AA model has measurable cardinals. We, we sort of suspect that there might be more than just measurable cardinals there. And that's a, an open question. Okay, thank you. And happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Well, the proof 